Let us discuss a numerical on medium gain. See, active medium gain in a laser is given as 1.05. Length of laser has been given as 30 centimeter. The loss coefficient and reflection coefficient of the mirrors has been given. You have to find the loss factor, loop gain and gain coefficient. So you can see how we will first be putting the formulas which we have derived above and put the numerical values given to us to get the answer. What do you understand by optical resonator cavity? What role does it play in laser? Optical resonators are often called cavities and they come out as one of the essential requirements for laser. Such a pair of mirror setup is called an optical resonator. The mirrors are facing each other and their centers are on the optical axis of the mirror. Space between the two mirrors is known as laser cavity. One of the mirror is kept fully reflecting and the other is kept partially reflecting. Very common question is what are stable and unstable cavities? See, this is the diagram of a stable reflector or a resonator where it is consisting of two identical mirrors of radii of curvature R and separated by R. Focal length of each mirror is R by 2 and all arrangements have been made so that minimum light escapes from the sides of the cavity. Such a cavity is known as a stable resonator. Unstable resonator, you take a plane mirror and a convex mirror, let a ray of light be incident on it, the ray is reflected between the mirror and finally escapes from the cavity. Such a resonator is known as an unstable resonator. So what do you mean by resonator modes? Discuss the different resonator modes. If both the mirrors of the cavity are perfectly reflecting, there will be no output as I told you earlier also. The light confined in the cavity reflected multiple times producing standing waves for certain resonant frequencies. The standing wave pattern produced are called modes and modes can be longitudinal or transverse. Comparison between stable and unstable resonator, many times it has been asked. Stable resonator, the oscillating beam is converged. Unstable resonator, oscillating beam spreads out. Laser output is from the center of optical axis. Laser output comes from the edge of the output. Field is confined to the axis in stable resonator. Field is not confined to the axis in unstable resonator. Used for low power lasers, unstable is used for high power lasers. Risk of breakage of mirrors is there in stable, but in unstable it is less. Different types of optical cavities, how optical cavities are used in laser operation, what role optical cavity plays in laser, important question. See, again, as I told you that in all resonators, we have either plane or spherical reflectors of rectangular or spherical shape separated by a distance. There are different configurations of optical cavities and the most common one is your fabry perot or parallel plane parallel optical cavity, spherical or concentric cavity, confocal cavity, etc. Explain the principle and construction of fabry perot resonator. Very important question. fabry perot or plane parallel optical cavity. A fabry perot cavity is a special configuration of mirrors that maximizes the response of an optical system to a change in frequency or wavelength of an input laser. This extreme sensitivity is due to the resonance condition of the wave. It consists of two plane mirrors parallel to each other and perpendicular to the laser's optical axis. 
and resonance frequency condition gets satisfied here. Typical application of Fabry Perot intermeter is to check whether a laser operates on a single resonator mode or on multiple modes. So the Fabry Perot interferometer makes use of multiple reflections between two closely spaced, partially silvered surfaces. Part of light is transmitted each time the light reaches the second surface. The large number of interfering rays produces an interferometer with extremely high resolution, somewhat like the multiple slits of a diffraction grating increases. And the fabry perot geometry is such that it is satisfying the condition of interference so that we get a good output and nice resolution of the laser beam where we satisfy the condition of resolution criteria. Main applications are they are used in comparison of wavelength. They are based on the study of fine st structural lines and they are able to observe directly the fine structure of spectral lines while Michelson, Morley, etc., which you must have heard in interference, are only uh, there, not able to detect the fine spectral lines.